AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and I will explain you now the microscopic anatomy of liver. Here is the liver. I will also explain you the histology of liver and a little bit of physiology of liver, but remember this is a channel about anatomy. In my previous lesson, I have explained the gross anatomy of liver. I have explained the surfaces of liver, the lobes, and the impressions on the liver. I have also explained the blood supply to the liver and how blood enters the liver and how blood is drained away from the liver. How liver gets its oxygen and how liver gets its nutrition. Now, Let's start by explaining the microscopic anatomy. Microscopically, each liver or lobe is seen to be made up of hepatic lobules. The lobules are roughly hexagonal and consists of plates of hepatocytes radiating from a central vein. Here we see the central vein and here we see the plates of hepatocytes radiating from the central vein. Now I will zoom in a little bit to show you one more component of lobuli and that component is a portal triad. The portal triad which can be found running along each of the lobuli's corners. So that's here, a corner, remember a corner here and a corner here, remember it was hexagonal shape. That's why we have six corners. The portal triad is misleadingly named. It's not a triad. It actually consists of five structures, three of which here are illustrated. Three structures here you see the artery, the hepatic artery, the branches coming from the hepatic artery. Then the branches, the, the, the blue ones, let's illustrate it on this side are the branches of the portal vein. And also you have the bile duct. It's the green structure here. So in one triad you can find these three structures. The branches of hepatic artery, portal vein and the bile duct. Because it was misleadingly named triad you can also find two more structures. You can find a lymphatic vessels and a branch of vagus nerve. Now I will zoom in even more to show you a really important thing here and that is this purple structure. You can see that the purple structure is connected with the portal vein and it is connected also with the hepatic artery, the branches of hepatic artery and the portal vein. That's exactly because that's where blood joins. The oxygen-rich blood coming from the hepatic artery that came from aorta and the blood that is carrying the nutrition in the portal vein that came from gastrointestinal tract are joining in this purple area and the purple area is called the sinusoids. Liver sinusoids. Now the liver sinusoids are the capillaries that drain the blood from the triates all the way to the central vein. In the center of each hepatic lobule that has a hexagonal shape there is a central vein. Here you can see it illustrated even better. Now we are looking at this same structure but from a little bit different perspective and a little bit more close-up perspective. In histology, the study of microscopic anatomy, there are two types of liver cells, parenhymal cells and non-parenhymal cells. 70 to 85 percent of liver volume is occupied by the parenhymal hepatocytes and those are these gray cells right here. The liver sinusoids are aligned with two types of cells, sinusoidal endothelial cells and the Kupfer cells. So here you have the endothelial cell of the sinusoid 
and you have the Kupfer cell of the sinusoid. Now between these hepatocytes and the endothelial sinusoidal cells there is a space and there that is the perisinusoidal space. Now between this space and the hepatocytes there are stellate cells of the liver and let me choose a different color let's say a blue color that's this cell right here so let me pick another color for the kupfer cells as well so we had a kupfer cell hepatocytes and the stellate cells we had the perisinusoidal space and we had the endothelial cells let's draw it let's mark them with a yellow color here. I know that this is getting a little bit more complicated when I draw over it but you can see this uh, cell right here as well and you can see the Kupfer cell over here and you know, the hepatocytes are all over the place. This green thing here is the bile duct. Okay. What you can also recognize on these arrows is that the bile is flowing in the other direction it's flowing in the opposite direction of the blood from the portal vein and the branches and the hepatic artery branches and in the sinusoidal uh, space you can see that it's going towards the central vein and the bile is going the other way around here we see the uh, sinusoid you can here you can see the blood cells because that's where the blood is flowing then you have the hepatocytes here and the perisinusoidal space right here now simply at my university and in Germany and in Austria we at least at my university we did not use this name I assume in English we would pronounce it DSA space or I don't know but we just said perisinusoidal space so I want to get back to this picture to explain the cells that remain unexplained. For example, let's start with the Kupfer cells. Those were these cells here. The Kupfer cells are specialized macrophages located in the liver lining the walls of the sinusoids that form part of the reticuloendothelial system. The scientists used to call these cells Sternzellen which means in German language a star cells but thought that was they inaccurately thought that they are part of the endothelium of the liver blood vessels and they they originated from it however after several years of research we came to the conclusion that these cells are macrophages actually their development begins in bone marrow with a genesis of promonocytes and monoblasts into monocytes and then onto the peripheral blood monocytes completing their differentiation into Kupfer cells. Now you don't have to remember that as more of a development but what's important for you is a function of these cells. Well you can see that these cells have a lot of contact here with blood and of course with the red blood cells. Well the red blood cells are broken down, down by phagocytic action where the hemoglobin molecule is split. The globin chains, chains are reutilized while the iron containing portion is further broken down into iron which is reutilized and bilirubin which is conjugated to glucuronic acid with the hepatocytes and then it's secreted into the bile. So let me get this straight again. The red blood cell, the red blood cell enters the Kupfer cell or actually it's simply being eaten by the Kupfer cell, Whoa. right? And hemoglobin molecule is split. Now the globin chain is reutilized while the iron containing portion is further broken down into iron which is then reutilized and it's also broken down in bilirubin which is not reutilized it is conjugated to glucuronic acid within these hepatocytes 
and then it's secreted into the bile. Okay, so from here you have first first was the the globin molecule that was reutilized, and second was iron. However, bilirubin is not. It's conjugated here in the hepatocytes, and then it's sent down in the bile. Now I hope I explained this as much as I can now. This is not easy to explain, but that's basically what we know about the function of Kupfer cells. And now everything I said further about the development, you can forget about. It. Let's explain these stellate cells, or at least that what we know about these types of cells. In normal liver, stellate cells are described as being in a quiescent state. Quiescent stellate cells represent 5 to 8% of total number of liver cells. These cells wrap around the sinusoid. Now imagine the sinusoid as a tube, they wrap around the sinusoid. And so far there are assumptions, but the function and the role of these quiescent cell hepatic stellate cells is it, it's unclear. However, when the liver is damaged, the stellate cells can change into an activated state. The activated stellate cell is characterized by proliferation, contractility, and hemotaxis. Now, when they changed into an activated state, there are things that are changing inside of these cells that we know. You see these yellow little dots here. Let me let me let me zoom in. Those are the lipid droplets, okay? And there we have stored vitamin A and retinal ester. Now, when they are activated into an activated state, we have the amount of stored vitamin A decreased progress progressively. The activated stellate cells are also responsible for for producing collagen scar tissue, which can lead to liver cirrhosis. And now at the very end, I would really, really like to explain you this, and, and maybe this will be the, the thing that will stay in your memory, because it's so shiny, it looks like a bunch of diamonds, and actually those are the zones of liver. As you can remember, I explained where, where the central vein is and where the actual triades are. So we had the triad here, triad here, triad here, and the central uh, vein here. Now you see these numbers here, one, two, three. Those are the zones. As you can see the arrow from here, going from here, this is where the oxygen-rich blood is flowing. So you can imagine that the zone one gets most of the oxygen, while the zone three gets less oxygen. So if you have lack of blood or lack of uh, oxygen in your blood, the damage would most probably first appear in the zone number three and not the zone number one. These conditions predetermine also the functions of these zones. For example, zone one, because it's right here close to the arteries, zone one, hepatocytes are specialized for oxidative liver functions such as gluconeogenesis beta oxidation of fatty acids and cholesterol synthesis while zone 3 hepatocytes they are more important for glycolysis lipogenesis and cytochrome p450 base drug detoxification so these are maybe the important things you can in diagnose you can use as a diagnostic tools you can determine what's going wrong which so, so also not all hepatocytes do the same thing this is very important thing so I'm at the very end I'm giving you the very important information not all hepatocytes do the same thing not all zones do the same thing this is very important for the diagnostic as a diagnostical method and a base for us. Also, I would like to mention that at zone 1 there can be a deposition of homocytorine and that happens in the hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis. That's what you can find in zone 1. 
And also, I did not mention zone 2. For example, zone 2 necrosis happens in yellow fever. This let, Let's pick the yellow color. So, yellow fever, zone 2. That's where you can find the necrosis. Yellow fever, also known as yellow jack, yellow plague, or bronze john, or whatever, is an acute viral disease. In most cases, symptoms include fever, chills, and you lose the appetite, you vomit. So more importantly, maybe I forgot one more thing to say is that yes, uh, zone 1 gets most of the oxygen, but it's also more exposed to hepatitis viruses. So right now I hope I explained you the, the in details the histology and also brought some good conclusions about liver. Now if you like my videos you can check out my Facebook and check out my video, check out my website and the software we're making. You can support our work and stick together with us. We're gonna release new videos soon. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.